OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. My name is Marjorie Olavides. I'm a project specialist with OTAN. I've been with OTAN now for about three years, um, but to be honest with you, I'm not a teacher. I have never been a teacher. I've never even been in an adult, in adult ed classroom. So hearing all of your stories over the past you know, few days, your stories and journeys, and uh, listening to all of you be so excited about the successes of your students has been very inspiring to me. And it totally makes this job more fulfilling, um, or I guess a different kind of fulfilling than my previous industry, uh, which was live entertainment. So I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I'm super nervous because my job before this was behind the camera and not in front of it. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't teach for a living. So, you know, talking to everyone is very, very different for me. Um, so before this, um, I was the audio video manager at one of our uh, larger Indian casinos up here in Sacramento. Um, I used to do audio and video for uh, live shows, live concerts um, and that kind of thing. Um, and in that industry, everything has to work. All the technology has to work, right? Um, the show must go on. Uh, my team and I always had to find a way to make everything work. Um, I was actually having a conversation with someone in the TDLS networking lounge yesterday, and this person was talking about how appreciative he is of this specific conference of TDLS, because even though he's very great and knowledgeable when it comes to education things, um, he's not very great when it comes to technologies and that, uh, and, you know, everything here, he says he's learned so much. So I told him, like I just told you that I'm the exact opposite. Um, I'm great with technology, but I still learn when it comes to education. Um, so hopefully my past experiences and knowledge um, will help me um, to help you all become more comfortable with technology and just know that even the pros have problems. Um, I was actually once at an Aerosmith concert and in the same show, the lead singer, Steven Tyler, his microphone squealed and the bass player microphone, uh, bass player's battery pack actually died on him during the show. So his guitar tech had to come out and, and uh, switch that out for him. So tech clubs happen to everyone. All right. It's not just you. I promise. Okay. Um, so some of the things we're going to cover today, um, I've experienced or have had quite a few other teachers email me or come into our office hours um, for help with. And I'm going to uh, plug a shameless OTAN plug right now. If you're not familiar with our office hours, uh, they're right now Tuesdays at 4 and Thursdays at noon. They're right here on Zoom. You can sign up on the adult ed training calendar. Um, we have OTAN staff there for you to ask questions um, about all things tech related, um, how to connect a wireless mouse or how to use an online tool or maybe practice something that you want to try with their students, uh, things of that sort. So um, we have people that come in and have no questions. They just want to hang out and listen and maybe learn. And they almost always end up asking a question. Um, it's totally casual, totally informal. Anyone can hop in and out anytime. Um, there's, it's free. So if you want to join, have any questions, I'll be in there. A um, couple, the, couple other of my colleagues, so feel free. Um, I also want to let you. I also want to let you know that as we're going through this, um, I really don't like hearing myself talk, and I'm sure I'm talking very fast right now. <laughs> but um, if you have any questions, I know I've said this a lot of times um, already. Um, I might not see the chat, but please feel free to unmute and ask questions. Um, or if it's something that's happened to you, um, if something that I'm talking about has happened to you, or you have a different way of going about it or a workaround for something, then let us know. Um, there's other people that might experience the same thing and you know, I might not have the same solution. So um, I'd like to think of this more as a discussion than a presentation. So please, please, please unmute yourselves. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, the first line of defense with tr when troubleshooting is to restart your computer, right? So if your computer is running slow, um, like it says here, the software hangs or your mouse is being jumpy, um, going all over the place, reboot. Um, seriously, I know your IT department is probably asking all the time when you call. The first thing they ask is, well, if, if that's happening, did you reboot? And you've probably rolled your eyes, you know, but restarting really is a thing. I promise. It's like a human taking a quick nap. Computers need to be refreshed also. Um, computers always have processes running in the background that you can't see. And rebooting refreshes those processes and frees up memory for the computer to do what you want it to do. So anytime something happens, refresh your computer. Nine times out of 10. Um, I'm looking at the chat. And uh, Kari said time date. Um, is that for office hours? Let me go back a slide real quick. 
Um, actually, I didn't put it on the slide. They're Tuesdays at four and Thursdays at noon. All right. And uh, the California Adult Ed Training Calendar is found at CA um, Adult Ed Training.org. I can post that in the in the mm -hmm. chat later. Okay. Uh, so um, one of the first things that happened when um, when COVID hit, when the pandemic hit was that we were all complaining about no internet or slow internet, right? That's because everyone was trying to get online at the same time to figure out how to navigate this new world, everyone, you know, working online and everything. Um, so think of the internet as a highway, uh, rush hour, every single car is trying to get somewhere at the same time. Um, internet pretty much works the same way. Uh, the wired network connection is always best. It's always going to hold a connection unless like a dog chumps, uh, comes and chomps on the cable or something. Um, there's little to no chance of interference like there might be with a Wi-Fi connection. Um, the connector for a wired connection looks like a big phone jack. Um, and like I said, it looks like your or, uh, it looks like your old school telephone connector that you've plugged into the wall, just bigger. Um, some of you might have families that uh, are at home and connected to the internet, and not everybody can be uh, connected through a cable. So some of you even now might be connected via Wi-Fi. Um, and the reason that your internet could drop out um, when you're connected via Wi-Fi. It might be because your computer is periodically scanning the air and it usually will latch on to the strongest signal that it finds um, and it can connect to. So say your neighbor has an unsecured Wi-Fi network, which means no password. Um, your computer can hook onto that network if the wind blows the right way. So um, here's how you find out um, which network connected to and how to switch if necessary. So on a PC, you're going to open up the start menu on the bottom uh, left hand corner of the screen and select the gear icon for settings. And then in that menu that comes up, we're going to want to look at the network and Internet settings. Um, and then from here, we can see that our network status is not connected. So we want to select Wi Fi over here on the on the left hand side. And I'm sorry, I'm on a Mac, so I can't I can't live show you this. But um, from here, we see on this computer that the Wi-Fi is turned off. Uh, we want to make sure that that's turned on. So we'll go ahead and click on that slider and we'll turn it on. And now we want to click on show available networks. And when we click that, the computer is going to scan for any networks that it can find and display them for you. And then you're going to uh, just select the one that you wanted to connect to. So in this case, I wanted to click on uh, I wanted to connect to SCOE Guest. Um, I was at the office, so I must have taken the screenshot pre-COVID. Um, so I want to choose that SCOE guest network and uh, choose connect. And then once I did that, I'm connected. Um, so you see another uh, you see another little uh, network here called SCOE staff, and it's showing action needed probably because I needed to input my password, and it won't connect until I do that. All right, and uh, network connection on a Mac. We're going to click on the system preferences, which is located in the other, the either the upper left hand corner, sorry, I couldn't remember of the screen, or maybe you have it um, in the Apple menu on the over in your dock. Um, so we open that up and you see the network icon. So you select that. And in that menu that comes up, we again see that Wi Fi over here, it says it's turned off. So we want to turn that on. And so on the right hand side of that menu, we're going to click the turn Wi Fi on button. And when that happens, uh, we see Wi-Fi is turned on. But in this case, um, I'm connected to it. The computer found a network that says hide. I don't know that network. So I would click on that drop down. And the one that I do want to check into is SCOE guest. So I'll click on that. OK. And then when I do that, it'll tell me that I'm connected and I should be good. But of course, you do that and you're still not connected. So in the case, in that case, um, you want to unplug your modem and your router if you have one. You want to unplug that for about 30 seconds, plug it back in. A router is basically a second device. Um, some of them, you know, if you're using Comcast or Verizon or AT&T or something, um, sometimes they'll have a secondary or they'll have that built into the, the modem already. So if that's the case, um, you can just unplug that one thing, the modem, and it's the things that has all the flashy lights on it. Okay, so you want to unplug that for about 30 seconds. This will let it um, 
this will let it forget everything that it knew. Once you wait 30 seconds, plug it back in, it'll find the connection from your internet provider, which like I said, is Comcast or AT&T or Verizon. Um, once it finds a signal, you'll know that it's found the signal because all the lights won't be, uh, won't be flashing anymore. All the lights should be green. Um, once that's once once that's all green, you can plug in the router if you have one. Um, if you plug in the router um, before the modem finds a signal, it can show as online, but it won't really be connected to the internet. Um, if you do this, you can just unplug the router for you know ten seconds, plug it back in again, and once you do that, you should be able to go to your computer and it should be up and running. And like I said, if it doesn't work, then reboot and it should work. Um, so before I move on, is there any questions about Wi-Fi or anything? Like I said, feel free to unmute yourself if you want to. I would love this to be more of a discussion than just me talking. So what again is the difference with mm -hmm. a router? If I'm having Wi-Fi challenges, would a router be helpful? Um, if you're having Wi-Fi, a router might be um, beneficial because sometimes you can move them closer to where you are. So um, at my house, I'm actually... Uh, my boyfriend and I came to stay with my parents um, when COVID hit because I'm too close to my parents and I wanted to quarantine with them so they didn't have to go grocery shopping by themselves and all that kind of thing. So the modem um, in this house is actually in the kitchen. So what I did was I actually ran a, a cable all the way to my room um, that's a wireless router and it's closer to me so I can... Um, so my computer can latch onto that signal easier and better. Um, this one, this the router that I have is both wireless and wired. So my phones over here, the, this house is very long. So um, the the modem that I, or the, I'm sorry, the router that I have here, I can connect my phones to wirelessly, but I'm actually directly plugged into that with my laptop. So it's the same as an extender, a router? Pretty much, pretty much the same thing. Um, there's a little bit of a difference um, we're an, ex, uh, I guess an extender, I don't know how to put it in easy terms, but an extender basically extends that signal, whereas a router, um, you can create, I guess, new networks. I don't really know how to explain it, <laughs> how to explain it but um, like Thanks. I said, a route, a, like a, an extender just extends the signal that's coming from the, the first device from the modem and a router, actually, you can create a new network with it. Um, yeah, Hilda says Wi-Fi extenders. Oh, actually, I think you just asked that question. And VPN, tell us all about it. Uh, when should we use VPN and when do we not need to use it? Um, VPN, in my experience, is actually connecting directly to um, like your works network. Um, sometimes like banks and things, I'm sure that when if they have people working off site, um, there's secure information. Um, that they don't want to leak out. So they'll force you to use a VPN, which is a virtual private network um, to connect to to connect to their, um, I guess their servers. <laughs> so um, VPN is mostly for when you need to connect to uh, like a secure server, or if um, like this, the SAC County Office of Education, who I work for, um, how do I put it? They, there might be some things that they don't have open to the public, um, like because sometimes they have uh, maybe like some school data that's very sensitive and they don't want anybody to connect to that. So they'll create a virtual private network that only people with login access um, can get to it. Did that answer your question, Tony? So you would you would use it if you're trying to connect to like, usually um, if they have a closed network, the only way you can get in is is by uh, by logging into that network. Tony, feel free to come off on my microphone if you're still here. Do I see Tony in here? Yeah, Tony. I'm still here. Okay. I was just typing. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I, yeah, I understand for the quote unquote work setting, but also mm -hmm. it seems like we're hearing more and more about using VPNs, particularly when we are, one day we'll be back in a hotel or conference uh -huh. room, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, because let's call a spade a shovel. <laughs> Oftentimes yeah. do additional non-conference related banking, we'll just hypothetically say. Mm -hmm. So when, is it just, 
when is it a good idea to use VPNs? When is not? And I, I guess one of the reasons is if I'm sitting in my my house, uh -huh. do I really need to use a VPN when I know it's secure, quote unquote, as secure as anything can be? So personally, I don't use VPNs that much. Um, but if I did, if I were like, if I was on my own home network and I knew I was on my own network and no one else could get into that network, then I probably wouldn't use a VPN. Um, now, if I'm out in public, like if I'm at Starbucks or something, I'm not really going to go in there and connect to their Wi-Fi. And if I am, if that's the only Wi-Fi I have available, um, I know that you can go out there and purchase a VPN, which basically hides your traffic. Um, so you can do that. Um, I mean, if I'm just going to like YouTube and watching videos, I'm probably not going to care. But if I'm out like at a hotel or something and I want to check my banking info, then I might just, you know, buy a month or a week worth of VPN and use it, you know, for that. Basically, a VPN just makes a, your own little private network um, that's more secure so hackers can't get in there and try to steal your information. That help? I saw you give a thumbs up, so cool. Um, so Beverly is asking in here, is it easy to move the router yourself? My provider wants to charge $85 to move it 10 feet. Um, I, I think it depends on your provider. Um, they might come in and they might have to look at wiring and things like that, or if they have to move it in the wall, then I could see that. But if it's just a matter of like moving it from, you know, like one side of the room to the other, you might be able to run a cable, um, but, I can't know for sure um, because there are different things with cable lengths or if you extend or uh, change the frequency, I guess, of the cable. I don't really know how to store it, but if you change the frequency of the cable, um, especially coax, coax cable is what you would have like seen back in the in the 80s or the 90s um, with your old cable programs. And it's that little screw and connector with the little pin that comes up in the middle. And if you broke that pin, <laughs> you could not get it to work. Um, so sometimes they have to make sure that that frequency works um, and is not losing uh, losing any signal. There's no signal degradation or anything. I actually wanted to move it closer to the computer. Oh, OK. They, when they mm -hmm. came to install it, they it was a, 10 feet away mm -hmm. and I forgot to ask them to move <laughs> it. And so even though they didn't do it right the first time around, they, they want to charge me for doing mm -hmm. it. Again. So I don't, I don't know if you know this, but if the, um, the, the router that you have, are you connected with a cable to that computer? Um, or are you connected via Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi. You know? Okay. Okay, because I was going to say if you're if you're if you're connected with a with a cable, you might just be able to buy a an Ethernet cable, and use the longer cable and run it to your computer so that they don't have to come move the actual router itself. Okay, thank you. I don't know if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay, cool. Any other questions? Um, Marjorie. Yeah. Uh, does uh, internet speed or the cost of your internet service determine uh, the strength of the signal at all? <laughs> um, it shouldn't. Yeah. Um, I know that um, in some houses, or actually, so I used to also work for Comcast in the um, in the call center. That was not fun at all. Uh, but I know some people would call when it's raining and say, "Hey, my my internet doesn't work," you know. So, and and they would have us, t you know, say it it's the weather you know, if water gets underground, which could be a thing if, you know, if water gets in the line, then that could slow down your internet connection. Um, as far as if the, if the signal coming into your house is bad or poor, then it could actually affect um, the speed of your internet. It might be really slow or sluggish and things like that. Um, but Usually, if there's a, you can run speedtest.net, which is what I use sometimes if my, if I look, if I, if I find my signal is slow, um, and if it's running. So I think my parents here, um, they're getting, I want to say like one gig or something for speed. And if I, if I log on to speedtest.net and try, I try to run a test, if it shows me anything maybe less than 50, then I will go restart the modem. Um, did that help? kind of answer the question um yeah a little bit thank you you <laughs> what <laughs> can i help explain uh, more or well i guess i just i've just had some issues where you know the I've, a couple of times the internet's been very slow mm -hmm. and um and you know i just have a basic plan mm -hmm. um, 
but uh, and there's not I'm not doing any streaming or anything. It's just okay. uh, really the only thing I'm really doing is the Zoom classes. Mm -hmm. There's another couple people that are taking Zoom classes mm -hmm. in the yeah. household too. Yeah. Uh -huh. So so um, bandwidth is a thing. Uh, remember that uh, internet is like a like a freeway. So if everybody is trying to get on that freeway at the same time, you get you get rush hour traffic, right? So if there's you know three or four of you in the house that are on Zoom meetings or you know watching YouTube videos or streaming um, streaming shows on like Apple TV or something, that's going to make your speed slower. So if you if you wanted to like if you have I don't know what your speed is now but if your speed is like you know 20 megabits per second or something like that for a household of four that might be a little bit low you might want to you might want to look into your plan and see if you can get that to go up a little bit um, maybe you know 50 or or something like that because okay. like I said the more people on the internet at the same time is going to cause your um, your internet to get slow. I actually have a colleague, um, she and her partner, <laughs> I'll be on a Zoom meeting with her and then all of a sudden her video will start glitching and she'll sound like Max Headroom. Um, and it's because her partner's in the other room also on a Zoom call. So, okay. What, uh, in, it's Tony Meissner again. Um, when you do the speed check, mm -hmm. are we looking at the download speed, the upload speed, the the ping, or what are we looking at and where do we draw the line between sucky and okie dokie? <laughs> So um, you're, you would have to contact your internet prov provider or look at like your bill to find out what you're paying for. Um, they have anywhere from like 20 megabits, like I said, to maybe like one gigabit per second now, um, or maybe even two now, I, I can't even remember. But um, so download speed is how fast the internet is coming into your computer, into your device. And the higher that number, the better. And then the upload speed is going to be your device sending um, sending packets out to the world. So um, you might be able to watch me and I'm moving fine because your download speed is good, but let's say that your upload speed is not as well. So I'm gonna, I'm, you're gonna see me moving fine, but I'm gonna see you and your camera is gonna be like, you'll be jumping, you know, back and forth. Or you might see the mouse cursor on my screen, you know, jumping all over the place. Um, so I can't I don't really I can't really tell you exactly what is quote unquote sucky and what is good. I think it's just it depends on what your household usage is. Right. All right. Any other questions? Um, yeah, I'm the yeah. only one in my household when um, online and when mm -hmm. I'm uh, teaching on Zoom, it looks like I've got now about 150 megabytes download cool. and 18 upload okay um but when i'm on zoom and i'm trying to open a google drive file or a google doc mm -hmm. file it takes forever <laughs> that I, could have be... a new, I have a very pretty i mean last year's macbook oh, okay um well you ruled out the computer um because i was going to say sometimes it could be like uh, the ram in your computer um, is not enough to handle the, all those processes at once. Yeah. Um, and I'm probably just, it's probably not that awful. <laughs> I, just, I don't have a long class and I just want to open mm -hmm. impatient. Yeah. I'm the same way. Like, especially now presenting, like if, if it doesn't open right away, I, I immediately think like I'm going down, like the world's going to end. Right. So, um, you can test it. You can test it also if um, you run that speedtest.net thing. I mean, actually, you already said you did. So um, if you wanted to come into office hours, that's something that I could test out with you and we can kind of look at some settings on the back end of your computer and see what might be causing that. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? All right, so we'll move on and let's say that your Internet finally is uh, is working. Um, you're trying to connect to Zoom or Teams or you know whatever your video conferencing app that you're using and it's acting up. Um, or maybe there's something that you used to be able to do um, within that app and you can't do it anymore. Um, just, I know Zoom does it once in a while um, where they might disable um, some functionality and you're like, where did it go? Um, there might be some updates that they released that fix whatever these issues were. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you have the most up-to-date version of the app. 
Um, if you're using Zoom or Teams, it's very similar in both. You'll sign into the app um, and then up here in the upper right hand corner of either application, um, you'll select your profile picture um, and then down here, ch click check for updates. If you're on Google Meet, this isn't an issue because it's browser based and it loads every time you access that platform. Um, so if your Google Meet isn't working, you'll need to clear your cache, which we'll go over later. And let's say you finally update the app and you're online and uh, you need to test your microphones. Um, you'll need to actually I'm sorry, you'll need to make sure that you can talk to and hear your audience or your students. Um, so for this, I suggest a wired headset. It's the most reliable. It's pretty much plug and go. Uh, the wireless Bluetooth headset is okay, but it's prone to disconnect, you know, due to low battery or interference, um, or it can randomly connect to another device. Uh, like, like I was attending a webinar where the presenter was using the AirPods. Um, it was actually Leslie Fisher. Does anyone know Leslie Fisher? She's amazing. If you haven't heard about her, she's awesome. Check her out. Very, very, she's very techie. So um she's amazing but anyway so in the middle of her webinar her phone rang and her airpods that she was using decided to jump over to her phone and she you know so i kind of saw her go flustered a little bit so for important classes or meetings and things um i'd suggest using a wired headset uh the computer mic i honestly would use as a last resort it can it can sound very hollow and noisy to your audience because these microphones are designed to pick up on all noise it hears, uh, which can cause ear fatigue in your listeners because their ears and their brains are trying to filter out the noise um, in order to concentrate on your voice. So um, as if you can look at my camera, I'm using a headset with a boom microphone because these are usually noise canceling and it'll help make my voice have more presence. Um, and I know that there's some people that use wired earbuds and they have the microphone that kind of dangles back down by their chest. And while these are OK, um, you can find a way to if you can find a way to help keep the microphone more in front of your mouth while speaking, that would be ideal. Um, so if you get into your video call, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you can hear and are heard. I think when some of you came into the room, since I'm my own host for this, I actually, you know, kept asking, can you all hear me? Can you all hear me? Um, I actually, I don't remember if I typed in the chat, if you could hear me. Um, so yeah, actually the first thing that we do um, is open the chat. So if no one hears a response to us right away, um, you know, we can type, can you hear me? I can't hear you. Um, but one of you know, one of the other, the next thing we do is we want to check our audio settings to make sure that we have our microphone and our speaker set correctly. Um, and I know on that note, um, don't have two devices connected to the room audio at the same time because this is going to cause feedback. Uh, feedback is basically a loop where the microphone is sending out what it picks up and the speakers are putting out what it hears. And that loop causes that real icky high pitch squeal that you hear and it makes you slam your laptop down or rip off your headphones. Um, I know that some people uh, like to have a confidence monitor, which is like a second device connected to the meeting um, so they can make sure that, you know, what the audience is seeing is what um, what you want them to see. So if that ever happens to you and you get that, you know, that crazy sound, um, instead of closing your laptop and after you rip off your headphones, mute all of your microphones and disconnect audio from that secondary device. Or if you're like in a room with other people, um, that are connected to the same room using different devices. Just make sure everyone's mics are muted. OK, uh, let me see if there's anything in the chat. Let's see. Brian says computer mics are very localized as well. Just one foot to the side of my students can hear me. Yes, very true. Uh, let's see. So in Zoom, to check that we're using the correct microphone, you can all actually look at your toolbar and do this. On the bottom left is the microphone icon. Um, you can go ahead and click on that. Uh, there's a carrot next to it right here. Um, that's going to bring up the audio settings menu. And we want to make sure we're using the correct microphone. So in my case, I'm using a Logitech USB headset. Right. I'm not worried about any other devices listed there, just the USB headset for both my speaker and my microphone. And I can also choose my built in microphone if I wanted to, which is the computer microphone and let me actually do that now. Hang on one second. So you can hear what my built in microphone sounds like. So now I'm going to come back. This should sound very airy. Tony, you're the only one on on camera. So does this sound horrible to you? I, I should sound more far away and you should hear more noise around me. Right. OK, so let me go ahead and switch back to my Logitech microphone. Um, so yeah, that sounds, you know, it, it might be harder for you and your students to, to hear. Um, and then also I'll demonstrate what I was talking about with the wired earbuds. 
um, the ones that hang down by your chest. So I'm just going to move this boom microphone away from my mouth. But when I do that, uh -huh. it's very, very hard for you to hear me again, right? Yes. So let me move my microphone back down. So see, it just having the mic positioned as close to, as close to your mouth as possible is best. It just gives you more presence, you know. And it, like I said, it it uh, prevents ear fatigue for your students or your audience. Okay. Um, so in Google Meet, you're going to select the three dots in the bottom right of the toolbar or the skinny snowman. Um, it'll bring up this menu. You want to click on settings. And then from there, it'll bring up this menu. Um, you're going to select audio, and then you're just going to make sure that you have the correct microphone and speakers listed there. And oops, I just opened my system preferences. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So in Teams, you're going to select your profile picture in the top right and then select settings. And then from there, you're going to see this menu. You want to choose devices. And then uh, your audio devices are at the very top, and you just want to make sure that you have the correct one selected there. OK, let me come back. I see no questions in the chat. All right, so we'll move on to video. So video allows um, all your attendees or your students to see the presenter. Um, let your audience know you exist. Show your camera at least once, um, at, or at least twice, at the beginning and the ending of your presentation. Um, the red slash through the camera icon means the camera is off. So just make sure that's not the case if others see um, that they, or if others say that they can't hear you. Um, if I were having internet issues today, which knock on wood, I have not yet, um, I would have turned my camera off because like, like we were talking about the internet and that bandwidth, um, you, I would ask myself and everyone else in here to turn off your camera if I was getting that message just to make sure that I don't get dropped off the call or if things started to get glitchy. All right, so video settings in Zoom, um, that video icon is next to the microphone icon in the lower right. So you wanna click on that carrot there and make sure that the correct camera is selected. So um, do any of you remember a few weeks ago that viral video of the lawyer that says, hey judge, I'm here, I'm not a cat. And if you haven't, you're in luck. I can show you that video. Just let me, uh, let me make sure real quick that I'm sharing my computer sound. Has anyone seen this? It's actually really funny. So here we go, hang on. Mr. Ponton, I believe you have a filter turned on in the video settings. Uh, you might want to uh, uh, take, take we're a We're trying look. to, we're tr can you hear me, Judge? I can hear you. I think it's a filter. It, in the it is, and I don't know how to remove it. I've got my assistant here. She's trying to, but uh, I'm prepared to go forward with it. That's, I'm here live. It's not, I'm not a cat. This cracks me I up can, every time. I can see that. Um, I think if you click the up arrow next to this. So I think the judge had a little more experience than than that lawyer did when it when it came to uh, when it came to how to change those settings. I love that video. <laughs> um, so anyway, so in order to uh, they would have alleviated all of that if they knew how to change their video source. So um, over here, you would click on the carrot next to the start video button. And I had to look for it because I wanted to know how they did it. And it's actually this app called Snap Camera. Um, so they had probably had whoever was using his computer before he did um, probably had the Snap Camera chosen. And if he would have just come over here and selected a different camera or made sure that was off, um, he wouldn't have had to have that <laughs> right so in meet it's uh the same area that you find your audio settings you're going to click the skinny snowman in the bottom right um, and then click on settings instead of audio we're going to choose to the video and make sure that we have the correct camera camera selected and then um in teams we're gonna it's going to be the same area again um, we're going to click on your profile picture in the upper right, choose settings, and then devices, and then the camera is towards the bottom of that menu. Okay, do we have any questions about that? Let me look in the chat. Hmm, let's see. Okay, so the last question in here is Vicky. When I try to add Zoom virtual background, I get a message saying my Intel processor does not support it. And yes, Vicky, that's true. So if you have an older computer, that might be the case. Um, 
the only recommendation yeah. I would have would be to update your <laughs> update that computer or maybe the video. Yeah, that, the district just gave it to me uh, less mm -hmm. than a year ago. Oh, so okay, that's interesting. It was new, they said. But the knows? other thing too is maybe the district might be blocking that because I know some dis districts can and do. Okay, got it. So Thanks. that might be another thing you might want to ask your IT department if they can enable that or or what the case may be. Okay, any other questions regarding anything that I've gone over? Or if you have new questions, no? Okay, uh, so sharing screen, um, Zoom Meet and Teams each have a different, a few different options when presenting. Uh, the two main ones we're gonna talk about are gonna be desktop and window. Uh, the desktop or the entire screen is going to share everything where Windows will only share a specific app. So, for example, um, if you're only sharing, if you decide to only share your PowerPoint um, and you follow a link that you have embedded in that PowerPoint and it opens up in a new browser window, your audience is not going to see the content uh, because you're you told you know, Zoom or Meet or Teams or whatever that you only want to share PowerPoint. So sharing your desktop is going to ensure that your audience always sees what you want or what you need them to see. Um, also, when you come on, make sure you ask them what they're seeing, because maybe you have two monitors and you might have shared the incorrect monitor and they're only seeing a desktop background and, you know, not the PowerPoint presentation um, that you want them to see. So I would ask them, um, do you guys see what I'm seeing or do you see what I'm sharing and what exactly are you seeing? OK, um, also keep in mind, though, that when you're sharing your entire desktop, that's going to share everything, um, including emails and any no notifications that might pop up. Um, I've been in meetings before and our OTAN training team is, you know, batting an idea back and forth and teams are there ding, 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 you know, so um, just make sure to turn that off um, or if, you know, your emails uh, close those close those apps also. OK, so um, in Zoom. Um, you probably can't see it now because I'm sharing, but you should see on the toolbar a green share screen button. Um, when you select that, this menu here pops up and it asks if I want to share a desktop. Um, I actually have three screens, so it shows me three desktops, um, one for one for each monitor. And it also lists PowerPoint because um, I have this PowerPoint open and then uh, some browsers for Chrome. OK, um, so I can choose if I want to shoot, share my whole desktop or just the window. And like I said, if I click on, if I choose to share just my PowerPoint and I want to open up this, this Chrome, um, a Chrome, you know, a Chrome tab from within PowerPoint, it's not going to show because I've only told Zoom to share PowerPoint. Okay. Um, so in Google Meet, um, at the, in the toolbar at the bottom next to the skinny snowman is where we see the present now button. And when I when you select that, it's going to tell you your entire screen, a window or a tab. Um, personally, I'm more of a Zoom and Teams user, so I'm not exactly sure what a tab is. Um, if I'm assuming that means a specific tab within a browser like uh, Firefox or Chrome. Um, do any of you use that? And can you confirm that or do any of you use Teams? No, OK, um, I see a question in the chat here. Then I came back. Um, why doesn't Zoom change so we can see what the audience sees when we screen share? Um, Beverly, can you come off microphone and kind of elaborate on your question? Yeah, uh, I don't know if it's even just Zoom, but every time, even during this conference, mm -hmm. people are always saying, can can you see my screen share? Mm -hmm. and, and I know I've shared screens on Zoom before, too, and you don't we don't see what the audience sees. And I wonder why that is. Isn't there something they can do so we know that we're sharing what we, we can see what we're sharing like the audience sees it? Um, let's see, there's a couple of comments coming into the chat. But when normally when you're screen sharing, um, depending on your app, there will be like, I don't see it now, but there usually is like a green bar or a red bar that comes around um, the application or the screen that I'm sharing. And like I said, if you, uh, let me come back to it here. So I'm using Zoom because I'm more familiar with this. So if I am if I decide that I wanna share desktop one, and um, while I'm sharing, if I decide to open a PowerPoint, um, maybe it'll open on desktop two. So I can see it on my other monitor, but I'm not remembering that, oh, you know what? I told Zoom to share desktop one. Right, so even though I have it open and I can't see it, my audience can't see it because it's not on the correct desktop. So like right now, um, I'm looking at all of your faces and names on my second monitor. And if I wanted you all to see that, I would have to do this and move it over to my number one monitor. 
Does that make sense? Yes. Does that help answer? Yeah, so that's one thing you want to make sure of. If you have more than one monitor or um, or maybe you just have the one the one uh, one monitor, make sure you're sharing your desktop and not just an application or else move that other program over to the correct screen. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, let me see, Rhonda. Uh, so Rhonda is saying, Beverly, it can depend on what equipment you're using. And if you have dual screens, best thing is to have a second device like an iPad or iPhone so you can see like the audience. And Jamie says, when sharing screen via Zoom, there are times when I think I've only shared a PowerPoint, for instance, but then all can see me moving around on my desktop as I open new docs so that in theory I haven't shared. I do that all the time, too. <laughs> so anyone else want to add to that? Or have any other suggestions? Okay. Um, so we went over this. And then, okay, so in Teams, um, when you're in a meeting, the top right um, next to the leave button when you're in a meeting, um, it says share content. This might be a little bit small, um, but this little button here is share content. So when I select that, three options appear here. Um, you get desktop, windows, oh wait, where is it? Desktop, window, and then you also get whiteboard and PowerPoint. I've actually never used the whiteboard or PowerPoint functions in Teams myself, so I can't go into much detail on that. Um, does anyone, any of you use that? It's essentially the same thing where you're sharing, if you share your desktop, it'll share the whole screen and a window will only show one specific application. Okay. Um, any other questions about anything else I've covered? No? All right, let's see. Let me see how we're doing on time. Um, it's. 145 and I'm going to let you guys not I'm not I'm not done yet but I'm just gonna let you know we have the tech share at 230 or tech slam at 230 so I'm going to make sure we all get get out in time to be able to attend that okay um so let's see how students see while presenting um I don't know if you've noticed I've been trying to make eye contact um with you by looking at my camera here and there um simulate this because I know it, fe it might feel awkward to you um by looking at the camera um, so you can maybe place a sticker next to it or a doll behind the camera and make sure you're talking or pretend you're talking to it. Um, let me see if I can kind of show you guys. I have to stop my share screen. Um, and what this does, it just makes it a little more personable for, for your students or your audience. Uh, let's see, share screen, desktop two. All right, so here, uh, let's say that I wanted to talk to Jamie and or maybe jamie's talking and so i'm looking right now at jamie's flower here but if you look at my camera it looks like i'm looking down it looks like i'm not paying attention so i i feel like i'm making eye, eye, eye contact with jamie but i'm really not because <laughs> you know she's down here so in zoom i can actually click and drag her icon to be up here i can kind of move this over my my camera is in the middle of my screen so if i move jamie's little icon here then it might look like I'm still looking a little bit down, but at least it looks like I'm looking more at the camera, right? So by doing that, it just helps make things a little more personal. And Jamie says, yeah, it's odd. I mainly look at pictures now, so I know what I look like. <laughs> so yeah, so if Tony, if I was earlier having a conversation with Tony, I could move Tony here and I can see Tony. Hi, Tony. <laughs> and hopefully this looks like I'm making more eye contact with you, right? So let me stop my screen share. And the same thing, actually, if um, like if you're sharing content or actually, let me share again. Uh, let me do that again. So say you're using an application or, you know, a PowerPoint or, you know, something where you can't uh, where you can't do what I'm doing in Zoom and, you know, clicking and dragging participants everywhere. You can still, you know, try to move them if you want to resize your window and move their camera or that content as close to the camera as you can like you can click and drag like if i want to if i'm instead if i want to read chat then i can move chat up here so do i mainly look at cameras as i talk no <laughs> like i said i don't know if you were here at the beginning but uh my job before this was behind the camera i i worked in live entertainment i worked behind the camera and i was always filming someone else so I'm really not used to looking at cameras. I try to look at the cameras as I talk. Yes, um, it's something that I'm trying to work on, but I I try. <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> Morning, That's good to question. know. Sure. Go ahead, Melissa. Is it better to have your own camera than the than use the camera from the computer? Sorry. 
sorry, I can't hear you. Let me turn it off. Marjorie, we can't hear you anymore. Oh, did I mute myself? I'm sorry. Yes. What did you not hear? <laughs> Uh, I'll just start over. So uh, <laughs> sorry about that. So um, let's see. See, tech tech things happen to everybody. It's not just you guys. Um, uh, what was I saying? Uh, where were we? Should we get a camera? Or oh, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm actually using the camera that's built into my laptop. I'm using a Mac. So um, I'm using that camera and they're not always the best quality. You know, usually I think they they just try to use the cheapest thing sometimes, you know, just to lower the price point for somebody. So it, you're almost always going to get better quality camera if you purchase one. Um, Logitech, um, they make decent cameras. They're pretty affordable. Um, they're pretty easy, just a USB plug in and go. So um, other things that might help, I don't know if my, my video is like grainy or anything, but one thing that really helps a lot is brightness. Um, if, it, you know, if, you're, if your image is very dark, um, you'll see like the little spots that, you know, show up in the video. Um, so it, it, the cameras, work, it, cameras work harder in dark light. Right, so just bringing more more light in to you, or you know, putting it on your face. I actually have right now. I have my drapes open, but I also have like a webcam, or not a webcam, a um, one of those web lights in front of me. Oh, a ring to help light, with that. You mean yeah, the ring lights. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I think it's helpful with the ring light. Thank you. <laughs> it is. Uh, let's see. So Vicky is asking. Um, I say to move the camera. We're, or the content we're sharing near the camera, does that work for Google Slides? Um, it might not work for slides unless there's a way you can minimize, um, I don't know, your presenter screen or something or have some sort of notes near your camera. It's not gonna work for everything, um, but if there, you know, even just, if you have like two monitors like me, um, I have the presentation up on the monitor that's to my left. So if I'm looking at it now, you know, it looks like I'm looking away from you guys when I'm really talking to you, right? But if I at least, if I move the presentation at least over to the monitor or, you know, underneath wherever my camera is, at least it, you know, at least it looks like I'm more looking at you, right? Like even like right now at the, on my screen, um, Cliff's name is down towards the bottom. But at least it looks like I'm over here looking in the general direction of the camera instead of over here off to the side, right? So Marjorie, you can move a display from a second screen onto the screen you're sharing and nobody else can see it? Well, so right now I'm looking at all of your images on my screen and you can't see it because I'm on a different monitor. But if I wanted to, like I said, I could move this over to the screen on the left, but now it looks now I'm looking now it looks like I'm totally looking away from everybody because I'm I moved it over to the other other screen. But you can see what I'm seeing. So if I move that off again, if I move that over to my other monitor, now you can't see it. Hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I love you guys coming off coming off of mute and talking because then I don't have to hear myself and that's amazing. <laughs> so all right, so um, let's say that you, you're, you know, you're all good and now you're trying to get to a web browser and it's, or you're trying to get to a web page and it's not opening. Um, like I said at the beginning of the presentation, I told you that rebooting your computer solves most issues. Uh, your web browser is sort of the same, so restarting your browser in some cases might help, but a better bet would be clearing your cache. You, I don't know if you've, you've heard that before, but um, clearing your cache, um, a cache is files uh, that your browser sometimes save to help pages load faster um, the next time you visit them. You might also see or hear something about cookies um, being saved. So cookies and cache are similar, but differ in that cookies save user data, right? So a cache is going to be like if you go to a bank or a banking website, um, it might save the, the logo for that bank. And um, if you go to um, Okay, maybe a bank wasn't the best. So let's say you go to YouTube, right? It's going to save um, that YouTube icon. And then when you log into YouTube and you click that remember me button, that's going to save a cookie. Um, so cookie, like I said, cache is just something with the site. Um, very generic things. Um, and a cookie is more specific like user thing. So that remember me button, like I said, it'll save your, your username and password. Um, or if you tell it, you know, I want a bigger font, I want it to be blue, 
that's a cookie. Okay, so clearing your cache is similar to rebooting your computer in that it gets rid of all the saved up files and it forces your browser to re download all those files and hopefully make that website work again. Um, so in Chrome. Um, you would click on your profile picture, or not your profile, sorry, next to your profile picture, that skinny snowman. Um, you're going to go down and choose settings. And then in the menu that comes up, you want to make sure you select privacy and security, and then choose clear browsing data. And then when you do that, it brings up these uh, different tabs. You have uh, basic or advanced. Uh, the basic tab is going to let you select if you want to clear your browsing history, um, your cookies and your cached images and files. And the advanced tab gives you a few more options. Um, on both tabs, you can choose if you want to delete things from the last 24 hours, the last week, um, the last month, and all time. Um, so browsing history uh, will clear all the websites you've visited. So if you um, say, today's Friday, so say you visited a, a website on Monday, say you went to YouTube on Monday and there was a video that you liked and you clear your cache um, for the past 24 hours, or I'm sorry, for the past week, you're not going to be able to find that YouTube video unless you've had a bookmark. That's what browsing history um, That's what browsing history will delete. Cookies are going to delete those um, that that user information that I was talking about. So you'll get be you'll be signed out of you know YouTube or Facebook or whatever. Um, and then your cached images and files are the ones that if your website is not working, that's what you're going to want to make sure and delete because that's going to force your brow your uh, your browser to re-download all those files and hopefully get that website working again. Okay. So Marjorie, a quick yeah. question. So even mm -hmm. when you receive a, a, a cookie, let's say, oh, do you want to accept mm -hmm. or decline? Even mm -hmm. if you don't click accept, they still send you the cookie, right? No matter, you can't get out of it. Um, usually you can tell it, like if you don't want it to save your username or your password, you can uncheck that remember me and it won't remember it, but it'll still remember different things like, oh, you visited this website. It, it will still keep that data. You can tell it not to, um, but, to be safe, you can go in there once a day or once a week, you know, and, and clear, clear the, that cookie. Well, yeah. Even, even when they send you, when you go to the website, they always say accept or not mm -hmm. accept, just usually ignore it, but I mm -hmm. think they still send it. No matter what, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, they usually do. They usually do. So okay. thank you. Sure. Uh, let's see, Brian, um, I find my document camera invaluable for Zoom instruction. And Vicky is asking, how do you use your doc camera with Zoom? Brian, do you want to? You want to help Vicky with that with that real quick? Or? Oh yes, yes. Um, so I, I have a document camera. I just plug it in and to my my PC, and um, it's 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 really uh, right away. What comes up on Zoom is there's a an advanced setting for uh, besides the the basic is you know sharing your screen or whiteboard, but then there's an advanced setting for that, and then I just click on that, and and the the um, the, the images come up from the from the document camera onto the screen. It's just like using a document camera in class, except it just goes right onto the screen. It's it's so easy. Yeah, I've done that sometimes too. Um, so I'm sharing that Zoom um, that Zoom screen again, and you you do have you know whiteboard. And I don't know if any of you know this. You can also share like your iPhone or your iPad in here, you just have to connect it to the same network. Um, you would select, you know, select um, iPhone or iPad via AirPlay. You just have to make sure your devices are on the same network. Um, and then click connect and hopefully it'll connect. And if you don't have a dock cam, this might work great for you. Cause then you can at least take the camera and, you know, hover it over what you want, want the, want the students to see if your camera is not as easily movable. All right, where was I? Uh, oh, hold on. So we went over that. And then, okay, so my last one here is Firefox. Um, so on the top right, um, you're going to clear your cache. You want to select that hamburger or those three lines in the upper right hand corner. Uh, choose preferences, or sometimes it might say options. Um, and then in there, you want to choose privacy and security and then select uh, clear data, which is this button over here. And that's going to allow you to choose whether you want to delete cookies and cached content or one or the other. OK. And is she still here? Let me look. Rhonda, are you still here? 
I don't see Rhonda anymore. So I'm here. I'm here. Oh, you are here. I'm actually going to call you out real quick. <laughs> so before yeah, we move on to questions, I figured you would for yesterday. <laughs> so Rhonda came into the networking lounge yesterday. She had an issue. Um, I told her I was going to add it to my presentation, but I didn't have time to add that slide. Um, but she came in the networking lounge yesterday and asked why her Zoom always dropped her and like aired out when she was trying to share um, a screen to more than 40 people. Um, she says it's fine with a few people, but it acts up with larger audiences. Um, um, she told me that her computer was a higher end one and should be more than powerful enough to run Zoom. So one of the things that I suggested was that she uninstall and reinstall Zoom. Like I said, you know, re refresh your cache, reboot your computer. Um, I'm just curious, did that work? Did you get to try it out? So I did <laughs> uninstall Zoom last night mm -hmm. and I had a one on one meeting with somebody mm -hmm. who never acts up in that setting. <laughs> okay. So I'll have to wait till I'm in a group uh, <laughs> okay. of people that's that large. But mm -hmm. it's very uncomfortable for me. And I know this morning, um, sitting in another presentation, mm -hmm. it was um, kind of uncomfortable because the presenter was struggling with something. And I, I kind of feel that when I'm doing the presenting that, you know, that happens and you don't <laughs> yeah. go on the other end, like, especially mm -hmm. if it's your students, you know, what are mm -hmm. they think, thinking or feeling? Mm -hmm. And so um, I just don't like when it happens because it kicks me out and then I disappear. People in the room are wondering, <laughs> where are did you? She go? Yeah. What mm -hmm. happened? And 30 mm -hmm. seconds later, I'm back. Um, so I will keep investigating, but I did uninstall at your request. I had never thought of that before. I wish I had, had not thought of that before. Um, well, yeah, keep me to get my, you know, keep me informed. I'm I'm so curious. I will. Um, yeah, so like I said, it's just like clearing your cache. Um, like clearing your cache helps the browser um, refresh what it needs to do. Reinstalling software um, it can refresh the application itself. Because sometimes for whatever reason, the file, uh, like one file that the program needs to run can get corrupted. Um, so reinstalling should hopefully eliminate that issue. Not always, but you know, most of the time. Okay, so um, that's pretty much the end. Like I said, I wanted to get everybody out, out of here a little bit early. Um, the tech slam is starting at 2.30. So I wanted to give you time for that. Um, but are there any questions? Does anything happen to you that I didn't cover? Um, we have you know, quite a few people in here, so we can talk it out. I'm more than happy to stay and do that for the next half hour. I have one, although I'm sure. thinking that I've, I've actually asked a lot of questions. <laughs> That's Someone perfectly fine. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. Okay, so I'm, um, as a viewer um, mm -hmm. of your webinar, I'm using side-by-side -side mode to take okay. notes. Mm -hmm. But when you direct us to something else, I don't know how to get to that other tab or other part of my browser without going out of side-to-side -side mode and then just kind of Clicking, on, I, I use a Mac, clicking on the okay. Chrome icon, to, and then I just get your little tiny photo. Is there any way to make side to side more user friendly for me? Um, do you, let's see, do you mind sharing your screen so I can see uh, more? Not a bit. Okay, let me go ahead and stop my share. And I see everyone saying thank you. Uh, let's see, you're welcome, everybody.